So the X series are horns that I have built to allow me to experiment with different design elements. And a lot of the X series horns are going to incorporate uh, different elements that you already see in the Summit series, or that might be coming in the Muse series, or the HT6 carbon fiber uh, options that will come soon. So I'm experimenting with a lot of different variations that could be related to those because I want to keep some things consistent while I make changes other places. So right now I'm playing on a 5mm. Uh, this one I think is the equivalent of a 3C. And uh, this horn does have the VGR, so the Venturi Gap Receiver, so I can take that off. And we can adjust flexibility, slotting, airflow, and resonance right here. And what I just played does not have an insert in it. So uh, we will put an insert in there here in a, a minute. And this is not even the horn I'm going to review, this is actually the X6, uh, which is a lead horn with a semi-round tuning slide. And this one does have um, the same lead pipe on it as the X7. So I believe I put number three lead pipes on both of these, and then the number one bell on both of the horns as well. So this one has one Saturn water key on the main tuning slide. and has the lightweight top caps, finger buttons, and bottom caps. So those are the very light versions. There's not as much bracing here, so we can resonate even more. Uh, this horn is much more efficient than a Bach, Yamaha, Shoki, or most other horns out there, uh, but it does create more resonance than the bell. So I'm gonna play it just another minute, then we're gonna pick up X7, which is slightly different. <laughs> because we don't have the insert in here. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Venturi Gap inserts. And I do wanna mention there's only one of each of the X-Series horns because they're prototypes. So even though you may see one pop up and you think, ooh, I wanna order one like that, but I wanna change something on it. Well, you can't do that on the X-Series because these are technically one-off horns. There's only one of each number and they won't be built ever again. Uh, like I said, because I will be experimenting with different design elements. And uh, we don't normally offer bent tuning slides, but I do have some bent semi-round tuning slides on these two horns. And that's because that's part of the experiments of this setup. Uh, and this is it really part of the HT6 carbon fiber uh, experiments. And I'm really trying to decide what kind of elements I want to include on that horn in brass and in carbon fiber. And right now I'm leaning towards making the body of the lead pipe carbon fiber as well as the tuning slide, but I'm not sure if I'm going to offer a semi-round or an elliptical or if I'll offer both as options. And then the same in the tuning uh, or the belt crook, I have a, an idea of making this whole thing carbon fiber as well. The bells, however, are most likely always going to be brass on the HT6 series. So we're going to hang this one up and pick up the X7 model and I will play it before and after I change inserts on this one. Now this one uh, is slightly different in a couple different ways. First off, the bottom caps are twice the weight. These are 3 8 inch and the other ones were a quarter inch. So it's a more efficient setup already. And then the top caps are the half inch recessed. So you can see it does look different than the X6. Not a lot different. It has the same lead pipe and bell, 
the same tuning slide. So these are both semi-round with just one Saturn on the tuning slide. And um, the other difference is the placement of this brace on the first slide. So let me tilt this one up. I'll bring them both up here. They are in slightly different places. So hopefully you can see that. And that's the extent of the differences between these horns. They both have the lightweight solid finger buttons. Let me tighten that one up. And I'm gonna get up close so you can see more details on this horn. Let me put a little more light on this. Okay, so there you can see the X7 logo, which is engraved right in the valve casing. It says 2018. The underside of this one was an HT4 brace. See that up there? And there's that placement of the first slide brace. I'll flip it around so we can see the underside. Nothing marked on this side. And then the top bracing, we have Harrelson on one side. See how thin those finger buttons are? But the heavier uh, recessed top cap, so these really go all the way down inside there. So, hopefully you have a better idea of what you're looking at on this horn. Now both of these horns, I think are listed at $4,500. Um, they're amazing horns. I mean, if you're looking for a horn that can do everything and double on lead, the X6 and the X7 were specifically designed for that purpose. And um, they do include the high efficiency lead pipe options, uh, but this is the 2017 version. So it's not our newest lead pipe. Uh, the newer ones are thicker all the way through, so this is the lighter version. And this one, like I said, does not have the insert, so I'm going to put one in there. Oh, no, this one does. So somebody already put one in there for me. Somebody was in here testing horns the other day, over the weekend. So I can go ahead and play it just the way it is. And that one looks like it has very little gap, which is what I like. So we can play this and get a feel for uh, really flexibility slotting and airflow. And it's pretty easy to get around on this horn. situation except for that real dark smoky jazz combo stuff for that you probably couldn't push it too hard and you need a deeper uh, cup and a bigger throw up and backboard to really get to that uh, otherwise I mean for all around playing and for lead work commercial everything else this horn is really gonna shine <laughs> vibrant sizzle in the lower register. This setting on the Venturi Gap insert gives me so much flexibility, I almost feel like I'm not going to lock it in else I just slide. Here I can just go everywhere. And I can land on any pitch and bend it. Hear how I can take an F, which normally locks in really hard, and move around. So I'm going to change that insert create more gap. Um, at the same time, I think I'm gonna open it up to a little bigger of insuring, and and we're, we're gonna increase that slotting. So I'm gonna put this one down. And I've got the full set of inserts right here, uh, which I will just pick up briefly so you can see them. That's our master set of inserts. When you buy one of these horns, you get nine of those to start. And if you buy a Summit Series or any X horn that has 
the VGR, then you can have as many of those inserts as you like for the rest of your life, as long as you own the horn. Uh, so let me put a different one on there. I'm going to go with uh, a 348 number 10. What that means is that the Venturi is 348 thousandths. And the gap setting is going to be 100 thousandths if you're playing on a 5 and now. So I'm just snapping that on to the receiver. There it is. And then I just screw the receiver back on. And I'm ready to go. So it's very quick to change these. Now I feel like I'm locking in. I can still bend a little bit, but it's not as dramatic. If I really want to lock in in the upper register, having a little more gap helps there. I can still bend it, as you heard on that G, I'm kind of wobbling a little bit for fun. Uh, if I want it to lock in even more, I would create more gap. So I just change the answer and go to maybe like a 12 or a 14 and we go all the way up to number 18. Um, another thing you could do is change the Venturi size. So if I feel like I'm using too much air, then I can make that Venturi of that insert smaller essentially changing the entire leaf pipe to feel like a smaller instrument. And I like to test dynamics and flexibility really more than anything because that gives me a good feel for understanding my flexibility and sliding here and the airflow. So I would say this Venturi is a little big for me for the setup I have on my mouthpiece. To make it really comfortable, I'd make that smaller. And I personally like more flexibility. I'd probably go down to a smaller gap setting as well. But uh, that gives you a good idea of what the X7 is all about. And of course the X6 is almost the identical horn. And uh, if you're watching this right now, if these horns are still available on our website, then um, just know if you're considering purchasing either one, then if you purchase one right now, I would include a 5mm kit, a 9-piece kit at no charge. I believe both of these are already discounted. So as long as this video is up, you can call us at 303-657-2747 or email us. We'll give you a free 5mm kit with the horn. And uh, it's an amazing deal for a really nice custom horn. So if you have questions, just put them in the comments.